Hello and welcome to Science for Today. What we're doing for today and um, uh, we need to do a lesson tomorrow also to keep on my plan. Mm, okay, that's good for me to think of at this moment. Okay, we're gonna do um, science tomorrow <laughs> rather than doing ELA. <clears throat> um, because we're not gonna start anything new in ELA anyway. So I need to do a, another science lesson and then another science lesson again on Thursday um, to keep on plan. So we're gonna be learning about something new each of these different days, a different method of um, gathering evidence of what might have happened at the scene of a crime. So we did fingerprints last week and that one was kind of involved because there's a lot to a fingerprint. And today we're going to be learning about um, tracks that are left behind by a human and then yeah and then tomorrow we're gonna learn about tracks that are left behind by an animal or by a vehicle and then well, something different on Thursday okay so here we go all right I should say for this um, you do not necessarily need to write down any notes um, for this, I would suggest though that you maybe get out a piece of paper <clears throat> that's going to have, sorry, I'm just thinking through this. Okay, probably the best thing is to have a piece of paper. Um, so you know how you had your piece of paper for the, like your notes that you had kind of made for fingerprints. <clears throat> We're making another page of notes for today, which is human shoe and footprints. And then we'll have another one tomorrow and then another one on Thursday. Um, we're, what we're going to be doing, I'm kind of going to give you a little bit of a preview. What we're going to be doing is learning three more things this week. And then next week, we're going to start on a project where you guys are going to be creating a crime scene where you have to plant evidence, um, of these different types of strategies. It's going to be a group project. Um, and I will, <clears throat> um, yeah, we'll talk about that like more so at the end of this week, but we're going to be, yeah. So these skills, you need to know this for creating your own crime scene. And then we're going to do a show what you know after the project is done. So it's going to be like quick. <laughs> um, okay, so here we go. All right. Okay. So human shoe and footprints. All right. So what we're mainly doing is determining today how fast somebody was going. And then tomorrow we're going to talk a little bit more like direction of travel. Uh, I think you'll be able to figure out direction of travel based upon like the direction of footprints. Okay, so the learning outcome is this. I can infer the method of movement of a suspect based on the qualities of the tracks left behind. So yeah, we're making inferences and the whole, this whole entire unit is about making inferences. We're gathering evidence, but then we are, yeah, we're trying to make a prediction or an inference, like reading between the lines, what happened, even though we can't actually, like, we don't have, we don't have video evidence of it. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so today we're going to be learning about how shoe and footprints will look different based upon the speed of travel and qualities of the individual. Okay. So I guess if you want to write anything down, you could just write down like, this learning outcome and then just a couple other little notes as we go through okay so this is a question if we were in if we were in class um <clears throat> we would be doing like this in two different days we would be doing a lab on or like kind of like an investigation as the first part and then we'd be doing like more of the learning at the second part so after explaining this you could pause me pause if you wanted to and then try this and I do suggest that you do even if it means that you just like try this uh for like three minutes it doesn't have to be like a huge elaborate thing but it would be cool for you to think of these questions and then kind of come up with what you think in your mind rather than me just like telling you which is going to be the next step okay so <clears throat> this is the question how do human tracks change with variation of speed okay so this is like, if you were designing an experiment, what type of experiment could you set up to test this question? How do human tracks change with variation of speed? What could you do to actually test this? Okay, this is like also what like scientists around the world always do. Okay, want to figure a new cure for, want to figure out a cure for coronavirus. Like what type of experiment could we set up to test this? How could we devise a plan to answer this question? And then think about your hypothesis. What do you think we would notice 
um, as the speed that you're traveling increases? What would we notice about the tracks? How would the tracks have changed as the speed that the individual is traveling increases or decreases? Okay, so now's the time to pause me if you want to and then think about it. Like maybe you wanna go outside and like go in the sand and then you could like observe what you have done. Um, if you choose to do this, I'd be so cool. I'd love, 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 love to see any pictures that you might happen to have of if you were actually going to do this. So um, yeah, you could also do something like maybe where you like go in a puddle and then like move at different speeds once your feet are already wet. That's an idea for how you could set up this experiment. But there might be other, there are other ways too that you could do for um, setting up this experiment. Okay, so optional. Um, yeah, but this could be posted. If you do this, post this to our science page after today, okay, to show like evidence of this being this kind of concept. Okay, alrighty. So, okay, so if you've done this, now you're back watching. Okay, so how fast were you going? Okay, now the number one clue, there's two clues. The number one clue is the length of the stride. So you see this person's running, right? We can tell. And the length of the stride increases with speed, okay? So the faster you're going, more likely than not, you're going to be taking larger strides, which I'm cool. I'm interested to see if anybody actually figured out. So that means the prints are far, uh, the farther apart the prints are, the greater the speed, okay? So that's a very strong inference that we could make. And we could see that this guy's, yeah, like he's taking pretty big strides. Um, the next thing is, yeah, so walking, your strides are usually closer together in length, okay? So that's the first thing, length of stride. And here are some examples, okay? So here's an example of somebody walking, okay? And then running, so we can see the strides are bigger. And then in this one, okay, this is actually gonna lead into our next one. So the person is, definitely this would be like a pretty strong footprint, but then there's kind of like a bit of a different pattern here. It might also be because of what they're stepping on. There might've been like more dirt underneath this piece of snow than this one, maybe this is more icy, but like the print itself looks a little bit different, right? Like we don't see the same amount of the print. Um, so this is what we're we'll talking about in just a minute. Okay, here's another example down here. So you see that there's our little color-coded guy jumping. Okay, so this person started with two feet and then they went, maybe landed here, and then the other foot maybe landed a little bit up. Okay, now this is the other thing that's interesting, is running, notice how the path is not only longer, but it's more narrow too, right? You're kind of like your feet stay in a little bit more of like a straight line. And then walking, closer together and then also a little bit more of like a stagger kind of thing than, yeah, than when you're running which is really interesting okay so there we go that's how we can tell the difference now the next thing is so this person's clearly walking okay so clue number two is depth of the stride so that means okay so certain parts of a shoe or footprint made while running should appear deeper than a print made while walking so this depends on the person's running style. So if someone's like, if someone's tempted to like run on their toes, then the spot their toe hits the ground would be way deeper than if they're just walking, right? So that would be, it would be, yeah, it would be deeper. Um, other people might run, like they might kind of do more of like a push off. And I think that that is what was happening kind of here. The person was like landing a little bit differently, maybe like was pushing off more of like their heels compared to even having their toes touch the ground. So it just depends on the person's walking style as well. Um, okay, yes, yeah, so certain parts. We're not saying always the toe or always the heel. It depends upon the person's running. Um, yeah, depends upon how their foot strikes the ground. Okay. So, the, oh yeah, there we go, I have it. Okay, so depending on the running style of the suspect, there may, um, there may be deep toe marks from where you push off or deep heel marks from where you land. So this would be really cool also to do an experiment on. And if we were in school, we would be doing an experiment on this where you actually practice this and you actually kind of like do, it's called a gait analysis is where you determine like what your running pattern is and yeah it might be different than someone else might be the same kind of yeah it just depends on your anatomy 
And then the other, then the comparison is walking print will be much clearer and more uniform. So this person is clearly walking. We can see very uniform and it's very, very, very clear compared to like this one. We think they started off maybe walking, then they started to run because the pattern becomes less clear. Okay. Alrighty. So then here we go. We have another one. This is, I found this one. This is kind of cool. Clearly this person's walking. We can tell very clear, uniform, close together. This one, I would guess the person is running because, well, first of all, it's in a quite straight pattern, but we see a really deep impression point here where the toe is. So I think this person's more of like a toe runner kind of thing. Okay, and okay, so the other thing is to watch out. Okay, so um, as we said, so clue one was this, length of the stride, okay? So usually that's the case, okay? However, we do have to be careful because you can be fooled because the stride of the length depends how tall the subject is, right? So yeah, how your height impacts the stride rate. So it's true, someone who has super long legs, like usually like people that are really, usually like really excellent runners are people who have really long legs because each of their strides is so much bigger. They're covering more ground as they're running. Um, and then this also kind of shows here, okay, again, like, this is more, this is more of like a child. This is a, an adult, right? So like the length of their height. So probably this person is taller because they have bigger feet and then their stride length is bigger. <clears throat> and then same thing here. This, we could make an inference this person's a child, shorter, smaller feet, shorter legs, smaller stride length. Okay. Right. Yeah. So usually longer legs means a wider gait or like a longer, like a longer stride length, but not all the time. Could you think of an example where this might be the case? <gasps> okay, if we were to be having class right now, we would be going into a discussion and I would be saying, okay, think of an example of what might be the case for <clears throat> an example where the stride length would be really long um, of something that maybe isn't very tall compared to like a really narrow stride length for something that is really tall where we might expect that they'd have a really long um a long gait or a long stride length so one example that i'll share with you is my grandpa when he just passed away like over you know when you, i had to leave for in november but he was super tall and he had like really long legs and but he was obviously like 94 when he passed away so he had like the shuffle like my siblings and i call it like the grandpa shuffle like he barely kind of could pick up his legs and he had like even though he's really tall and like long legs and everything his his stride length was like eh, 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 so small right so that's why it can't always be used to make that inference um yeah but it's like it's kind of like it's a clue anyway it doesn't mean it's like hard evidence that we have to use it but it's another piece of evidence that the um that the investigators would use okay so that's my example of like grandpa but what else might be another example okay hopefully you're thinking about this you're getting your brain to kind of connect and think of another example i'll share another one with you that i thought of which is kind of funny um okay so here's my example um so height versus stride length right Cheetah, not very tall, but look at that stride length. One of the fastest animals there is, right? Land animals. So that's pretty incredible. You know, they're covering a lot of distance between each stride. And then we have our giraffe, right? Super tall, but look how like kind of like small this little stride length is. Cause it depends upon like even like the anatomy of their hips, right? Like their joints here don't really move very much compared to like look at the range of motion right in this in this cheetah okay then i found this this is really funny when i was searching for like images of a giraffe running i found this and it's so funny i have to show it to you <laughs> look at it running <laughs> it's like maybe there's like uh, like a bug or something chasing it I've never seen anything like that before. But even watch his stride length, right? Super small. Camels could probably be another example of this. They kind of run similar to camels. Yeah. Okay, anyway. 
It's not, yeah. Okay, anyway, it's like kind of funny. Um, yeah, okay, there you go. So, okay, next thing is, um, last part for today, is the other thing that we might need to be aware of is the different types of shoe prints, which is, yeah, which can give us like huge clues to, um, to a crime scene if like one person was there or not. Um, so, okay, so you can be classified in so many ways. I've listed a few of them, but this isn't even all of them. So whether the, whether the shoe has any heels, like maybe it's like a high heel shoe, what would that look like? Okay, these ones, I don't think these are any high heeled um, examples. Visible tread, okay, so a visible tread means like the print, tread means print. So these, I'm gonna guess this is like a hiking shoe, maybe for like in the snow or in like the desert or something, probably in the snow, so there's spikes on this, so it would have a really good grip. Um, other shoes, like I know the shoes that I have in Abu Dhabi, I'm not going to be able to wear them in Calgary because they are, there's no tread. That means if I step on ice, whoosh, you'd slip right away. So that's an, that's an interesting thing that I kind of do look for sometimes a little bit when I'm buying shoes. No treads. Okay. So that would be like this barefoot or even like, yeah, I wonder what kind of treads you have on your shoes. And this could be something that we could even like, that you could even post a picture of is, um, the shoes like a type of tread that you have in your shoes so yeah there might be something like you know maybe maybe you never even looked at the bottom of your shoes before but is it identifiable that it's like you that's left the house or your sibling if they have a different type of tread on the bottom of their shoes okay the next thing is okay so wide tread or narrow tread so a wide tread would mean there's lots of space between the pattern so that would probably be used for um like gripping on to something such as like the snow a narrow tread would be like much much sleeker so it wouldn't need to have as much grip okay and the other thing is so the other classification methods are size of the shoe print okay yeah so obviously like way bigger compared to way smaller toe point probably looks like a more of a female shoe rounded toe oh this one okay yeah this one might be the high heel one right there's like a little heel there or in this one too rounded toe there you go and so on so there's more like i haven't even listed them all but those are just a couple of examples of how we could identify them um yeah and okay so last thing we're gonna do is just watch this and then bah. okay <laughs> This building has been constructed in the shape of a question mark. <clears throat> and that's a clue to what goes on here. Harperley Hall in Durham is a state-of-the-art teaching centre. Here, students learn the skills required to become a crime scene investigator. Footwear marks are the most common type of evidence found at crime scenes. Unique patterns of wear and scuffing make it possible to match even part of a print to an individual shoe, rather like a fingerprint. Footwear marks are found at around half of all crime scenes. That's a lot of valuable information to be collected and preserved. Ian Wilson is the CSI school's footprint expert. Today's lesson involves a mock-up of a burglary. I'm noticing there's some papers on the floor there, so that would be an area that I would consider searching for the possibility of latent prints on that newspaper. Potentially, there could be a hidden mark on there in dust. So what I'll use is an Esla machine to actually lift the dust in the hope that I make that mark a lot more visible to us. Place the electrodes on the earthen plate. The Esla stands for electrostatic lifting apparatus. Wow. The technique involves placing a foil sheet over the suspected print and using electrical charges to attract dust particles. If you knock the lights off. By shining a white light at an angle, we can see a print. Straight sure. away, we've got a really clear imprint. Although some footwear marks are easier to see than the one on the newspaper, it doesn't mean they're easier to collect as evidence. Ian takes me outside to the grounds of the CSI school, where a shoe print has been found, which could be connected to the burglary. So a completely different type of print this. So how would you lift this one? This being a three-dimensional print, I, it's got depth to it. Rather than lift it, we'll need to take a cast Plastic of it. print, right? Part of the CSI's portable kit is a casting powder. I wish the quality added, was better of this then video. Then it's poured onto the footprint. Oh. Down into the mark. It's then labelled and left to set. 
I don't want to cause any damage to it at this stage. So to protect it, we'll just put it in this box. We've got our footwear evidence from the crime scenes. Now it's off to the lab to see how it can help us. Police have recovered a pair of training shoes from a suspect, but are they a match to our prints? Surely thousands of people would have a trainer like that. Indeed, there will be thousands of uh, training shoes, pretty much the same as this. So what we'll be looking at is not only the pattern type, but we'll be looking at the size, um, the areas of wear within the sole. Ultimately, we'll be looking for identifying features, which would be nicks and cuts within the sole area. You can see that there is actually quite a substantial nick. Ian has made a copy of the suspect's shoe. By placing it over photos of the prints found in the mud and on the newspaper, he can compare the images. Straight wow. away, you can see that this uh, matches up very, very nicely. A look at the cast confirms the shoe was at the scene of the crime. Cool. Another tool available to the CSI is footwear intelligence technology. A database which contains thousands of shoe patterns, images, and brand logos. So Ian, this is great, but what happens if a suspect says, yeah, so what if you've got the shoes on me? They're not mine, I just borrowed them from my mate. Okay, well what we do there is something called Cinderella analysis. Here we have an example of an insole from a shoe, and you can see here quite clearly where each toe lies within that shoe. And that's what makes us able to put the person back into the shoe. That can be as unique as a fingerprint. The distinctive impressions on the insole didn't form overnight. These shoes have been worn regularly by the same person. A criminal will often commit many crimes wearing the same pair of shoes. So footwear analysis can help solve several crimes at once. As CSI technology gets more sophisticated, even the smallest mark left behind by a shoe can help lead police to the door of a criminal. Where to hide really is the rabbit. If you even if you've been your shoes, that doesn't mean you're in the clear. Not at all, and that's exactly what happened in a big case in Manchester just a couple of years ago. There was a big murder inquiry, and uh, a suspect was quickly arrested for the crime. But police were really struggling with getting the evidence in order to charge him. He was evading all the questions. They went round to his flat. There was no evidence there. They searched the crime scene. There was a blood-stained footprint there, so that was crucial. In his flat, there was no shoes. It looked like he'd been them. But what they did do is they took a latent print, which is what we just saw from the film there, where they actually extracted a footprint that's invisible to the naked eye, got this print, matched it up with the bloodstained one at the crime scene. It was a direct hit, and he's uh, now serving 38 years in prison for the murder. Whoa. Cool. Okay. So, yeah, that was... Okay, so that was it for today. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so that was it for today. Um, so the only thing that you could do, and again, this is optional, is to, I guess, show a difference in like walking versus running prints. So you need to be creative with how you could show that and then like photograph it and take a picture. And then the other thing you could do is look at some different tread patterns of your shoes. And then maybe you want to see if you could make an imprint on something of your shoe. And then we could look at it as if it was like a track that was left behind. Um, so yes, those are optional. But if you would like to do that, then and then post it to our science wall, it'd be really cool for us to see some different examples of what you guys come up with. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it for today for science. And we'll see you tomorrow for another lesson. So I'm thinking what we're going to do is our lesson for science is going to be at 11 o'clock um, rather than ELA for tomorrow because we're okay for ELA. Okay, there you go and have a great night. See you later.